Hi guys and welcome back to Pass the Move and for today's episode we've got a Liverpool tactical and team guide. Now as you can see uh, this is a very realistic um, <laughs> uh, you know replication of me. You know trust the game for sure this is exactly how I look like in real life. But anyways uh, let's get into how we are going to make our team and uh, you know to sell to keep and uh, all those sort of details. So as you can see I already had someone in my comment section talk about he needed some help with the Liverpool team so I decided to do this video as well for anyone else who's looking for help um, with the Liverpool team. So just you know looking at the starting 11 or rather the squad all of it actually and this isn't the starting 11 you can see a number of injuries here but I don't think any of them are too bad. Two to four weeks, four to two months, uh, four to seven weeks. Most of these should return within the time pre-season is done so you shouldn't have to worry too much but anyways as i always say sort everyone out by ability uh pick the first 11 according to their ability and then try and make a team out of them so as you can see we've got uh, a winger and mane i think he's comfortable in other positions as well probably but most naturally as a winger uh Firmino is an advanced playmaker but also capable of playing in the striker role Khan, defensive mid and centre mid, Coutinho, left wing and advanced playmaker, uh, Matipic, centre back, Henderson, both defensive mid and centre mid. Origi is actually quite highly rated apparently, 22 million. Uh, striker, and I guess an inside forward as well at the same time. Whoops. Um, Sturridge, just a striker, poacher, false nine and complete forward um lalana advanced playmaker center midfielder and even right winger and white naldum center mid advanced playmaker and that leaves us with moreno a left back even wing back actually uh so just by looking at this you've got right wing left wing advanced playmaker you've got a striker you've got players capable of playing in centre mid, it looks like we're heading for another 4-3-1. So <laughs> just to switch things around a little bit, as you can see it's already set up. Uh, let's see what my assistant thinks. He also thinks the 4 2 is good, but he thinks we should go with a DM wide. Um, but yeah, no, just to switch things up a little bit more, what we're going to do is we're going to give you one possession-based side that you can build and one direct side. So what we're going to do here you guys already know what I like in my uh, tactical instructions, but just in case you don't know, I like to keep it simple. So if, if possession based, slower tempo, shorter passing, be more expressive and roam from positions. And again, I'll repeat, if you want to play possession based, there's plenty of more instructions you can add if you're that type of uh, manager. Uh, so what you can do is play a higher line, push up, offside trap, play out of defense, work ball into box, retain possession. You can easily do all of these. In fact, you can even get stuck in if you're not too worried about your players getting sent off or anything. And that would be perfectly fine as um, in terms of playing a possession base. In fact, you could even go narrow to keep your players closer to each other. Um, I'm going to ignore all of that and I'll do what I like to do. Of course, um, yeah, never mind. I was going to say something else, but okay. Uh, lower tempo, shorter passing. And that's it, just for instruction. So what we're going to do is sort it out accordingly. Mane is a winger, so the player behind him should be a fullback on attack. Uh, I think we'll play Coutinho as an inside forward attacking. Uh, we don't want him to be worried, too worried about crossing. We want him to try and score goals from out wide. We'll have a wing back on support there. As I mentioned before in the 4-2-3-1, these two have to be a bit more defensive compared to other formations. So we will have to go with a normal centre mid on defend and deep line playmaker on support role. Um, a duty is that duty or role? It's a duty. Uh, but as I mentioned, you know, you just have to keep them more defensive, and this this type of um, setup does the double pivot. So these two stay on, and they'll help the the fullbacks push on and let the wingers do their thing. Uh, we've got an advanced playmaker in Firmino on attack, and we've got Sturridge as a complete forward on support. And I think even Rigi is comfortable playing that as well. So more than capable of de doing these roles. So now what you can do is you've got Emery Khan, uh, capable of playing as a deep line playmaker on support, uh, but he should 
technically I'm, I'm assuming, but we'll see right now, plays a central midfielder on defence. He seems to be doing that okay as well. In fact, I would recommend him playing that role rather than a deep line playmaker. He seems a bit more suited to it. Henderson is probably decent as a deep line playmaker, but again, I think he can play centre mid on defence and he can do that as well as you can see there. Uh, so that gives you the option of putting Lalana either as a backup to um, what's his name, Firmino, or you can actually push him into midfield as a deep line playmaker on support as well. And the same can be said as well for Giorgino Wijnaldum, I guess if that's how you say his name. Uh, so yeah, you got options basically. So as many of these players that you can squish into your first 11, the better because they are the top 11 players at this squad. Uh, now, if we're going to think about what type of formation to play direct football in, of course the mentality should be controlled if you're playing possession based. Um, let's have a look here at this first 11. Now this is where you're going to have a bit of a tough time to make a decision. Um, oops. Okay. Amino can play as a striker as well. Coutinho. Alright, let's see what we can do here. I think we can probably go for the 4 4 2. If you want to play directly, 4 4 2 sounds just about right. Attacking mentality or counters both suited. Uh, but of course, this is a top leading Premier Division side, so they should be mostly playing on attack most times. Um, now this is where it gets tough. Mane again as a winger and again we're going to go on attack there. Uh, I think we can go for a bit more of an expressive midfield so this time we will play a deep line playmaker on defend and we can let Jordan Henderson have fun in his preferred role as a box-to-box -box midfielder. Uh, up front we'll have um, Origi or can Sturridge play? Well either way Origi on a complete forward on support and storage on a poacher and I think you can probably play Origi as a poacher as well so really you've got an option where you can play either one in either position and if you're feeling in the middle of the game that one of them aren't performing as good as the other uh, you can actually switch them around mid-game so that gives you plenty of options actually uh, which is a good thing. Now your issue here is your left wing spot um, and of course what to do with Firmino. Now Firmino's probably capable, he is capable of playing as a complete forward on support as well, but maybe even as a poacher. So you've got options, you don't have to play Origi if you don't want, if you don't really you know, trust him or anything. Um, but left wing's where we have an issue. Now the issue is, how can we sort that out? Lana. I think it just, you can, if you really want, you can probably train him to be a winger in that left wing role because playing as a wide playmaker is, does not suit a uh, direct play so even though he's a lot suited to that playing as a winger here um, or you can actually maybe play him as a deep line playmaker if you eventually switch him I'm sure he's used to it you just have to train him for it um, and I think yeah I think the 4 2 probably makes just about more sense than any other direct system So I think we can stick to that. So train him as a wide, uh, as a winger. Sorry. Let's see who else. What other wingers we've got options in, and we don't. The other option might be actually Moreno on the winger. Yeah, he'll do. He'll do a decent job for you. Probably better because he's more suited to it than a fullback. If I'm honest with you, positioning, marking, not too good. So I have concentration as well. If you play him as a winger might actually play better for you than that. But of course you can bring in players and we'll get into that right now actually. Oh actually you know what let's take a step back. So for me again keeping things really simple and again it's such a small change. Instead of going lower we go higher for more direct. Instead of going shorter we go more direct passing and once more be more expressive run from, from positions. That's what I like to do. Um, now another thing now, if you really want to be direct, there's other things you can do. So there's things that you can do, such as you don't have to have roam from positions. Uh, you can clear the ball to the flanks, especially in a 4-4-2, that's completely fine. Uh, you can also run at defense, and that's as direct as it comes. So I think these type of instructions suits it more. Uh, if you're playing on the counter, you want to draw players in. What you could also do is play deeper maybe, and close down a little less if you don't want to. 
and uh, that will draw the opposition team into your area basically and that way you can counter them really well uh, of course if you want to be direct it naturally does go wider but if you really want to be crazy wide you could go width wide as well and I think that's all the tactical instructions I will give you uh, I guess pass the space and hit early crosses is an option as well uh, but that's more about preference rather than um, playing directly, you know, it's more of a style type of thing. You can also stay on feet if you want to try and make your team stick to their team shape as much as possible. But as I mentioned, my preferences keep it as simple as possible, just four instructions, and those are the ones that go with. Now we can finally talk about the squad. So, Liverpool are a team that you really need to invest in the flanks. Regardless of whichever formation you're going to be playing with, you only got... Um, your wide players, you only have a starting 11 of them basically. So you've only got one full back, one, one, well, one right back, one left back, one winger, and one left winger, and that's it. So they do need improvement. Uh, you do need it's an area that you need to invest in for sure, and um, it's really up to you how you see it. So in your keeping, in your goalkeeping department, you've got two players of a similar mode. Now let's just quickly see who our best judging ability is. And that would be Peter. So let's find Peter. Peter, Peter. Right, there you go. So he thinks uh, Simon, Simon Mignoli, I don't know how to say his name either, I hear it all the time. Uh, and Loris are both probably just good players. So what you could do, sell either or, maybe keep some faith in uh, Loris because he does have potential for it. Uh, so maybe you don't really necessarily do. He's 23 years old, so he could technically still improve, but not that much. Um, but he does have it in him. Let's see what the goalkeeper thinks. Oh, he doesn't have an opinion. That's great. Uh, so you could maybe trust in Carius a little bit, wait to see if he does improve, and then sell him on, sell one of them. Um, but if Carius does become a leading player, then it would be perfect for you because that would mean he'd be your first choice. Uh, Mignoli would be the perfect backup. And that's it. But if you really do, you could sell one of them and bring in a star goalkeeper of your own choice and keep the other as a backup. Uh, I mentioned this again, even though I mentioned it all my episodes. What I like to do with my squad is have 22 players. Uh, and the reason being is one player per position. Uh, sorry, two players per position. One the starter and one the backup. And I like the backup to be a player with potential rather than a player who's just decent or good. Um, but of course, you can do that gradually. It doesn't have to be straight away in the first season. So Klein will probably be your first choice. Uh, he is only considered as good and doesn't look like he can actually improve anymore by the looks of it. Um, so maybe you could bring in someone else and keep him as backup. Uh, Moreno's probably just about the same even though he does can improve by a slight amount. So you could show some faith in him if you want. Bring someone else young who's uh, capable of playing it. In the centre back position you have a lot of choices here. So you just need four but you've got six here and my suggestion is to get rid of the weak ones. So the weak ones, just by looking at here, I'm not even 100% sure, is Lori and Gomez. And this is your four here. So what you want is the two centre-backs who are leading, and it's probably Matip. Oh, apparently, apparently Matip isn't. And uh, Saka is? Nope, all your centre-backs seem to be just good. So maybe you're better off... Yeah, by the looks of it, you're better off selling two of these. And I would suggest... I would actually suggest Lovren because he's susceptible to injury, so it'd be useless to have him. Uh, he always he might be out most of the time and I think you should probably sell Clavan as well, he's 30 years of age, it doesn't make sense to keep him on. If you sell those two, bring in two star strikers and keep Saka and Matic as your backups, that sounds a decent, decent enough plan and eventually Gomez will um, fulfill his potential maybe and that way you can, you know, claim as your first choice. Um, but if you do keep everyone as is and maybe one of these Centre backs, or uh, you can switch one of these to ball playing defender according to who you're playing if they're more comfortable with it or not. Uh, okay, that leaves us with our centre mid. So you've got a lot of options actually because it depends on how you're using it. Uh, if you're playing direct, then you don't need advanced playmakers at all. So you can retrain some, uh, such as Wayne Odom and Lalana, into centre mids. And that would mean getting rid of others, or you, if you're playing with a possession base, then it makes sense to do something else here, which would mean just training one of them and keeping Firmino as an advanced playmaker and getting rid of the other. Um, 
Of course, if you're playing 4-4-2, you need four strikers, so these will be your four here. If not, then that means that you have to get rid of Ings, I think. Uh, maybe send them out on loan, and uh, when he comes back, sell him when he has fulfilled potential, or see how Origi gets on, and see who you like more, Origi or Ings, and then keep or sell the other. Um, but yeah, if you're playing... So yeah, it's just really, you have to pick which one you want to pick. Uh, and of course, I would suggest keeping Khan and Henderson. They should be your first choice midfield, I think. Um, but you also got great options in Wanyanob and Wajinaldum and Lana, uh, depending on which formations, of course, you use. They're all capable of playing these roles. Now, if we just quickly look, Livia is only considered good. Khan has potential to be leading, so you know you should trust in him a little bit. Henderson's only good for some reason. I think he's actually considered to be leading, eventually, maybe. Um, but you might be better off bring, improving that sentiment position as well, uh, just depending on who you want. So, Wajnalam is also just good. Lanana. Lanana is leading, so you can. he should definitely be your first choice sentiment. Okay, this is all according to your assistant, so. Well, actually, not the assistant, but. Um, you know, you should. If you don't trust him, maybe you can get someone in with better judging ability, but 16 is pretty close to almost perfect, so. I think you can trust that judgment. <coughs> Also, don't forget, of course, when you're playing players in different positions or roles, for example, uh, their ability reduces or increases according to, you know, where they are most comfortable and whatnot like that. So anyways, uh, that leaves us with the wingers, and as I mentioned, that's just Mane and Coutinho, so you have to improve. Honestly, the, play the places that you definitely need to improve is the flanks. Everywhere else is just uh, icing on the cake, really. And I think we still got strikers already, as well as advanced playmakers, so... It's up to you guys, and I think that will be all for today's episode. We'll be looking into, uh, I'm not sure which team next, maybe United or City, or maybe even Tottenham. It depends who comes first, I guess. Uh, but anyways, that will be all for today's episode. Uh, so if you did enjoy it, then please do, of course, hit the like button and subscribe for more Daily Football Manager 2017 content. And as always, thank you guys for watching.